Hare Krishna, there is a one devotee by Nexus name. Can you reveal your name? Because I don't know whether it is from our group or it's uh, some other group has joined in this one. Can you tell your name, please? The name shows okay. Nexus at five. Who is this Nexus Fayo in this server group? Hare. Hare Krishna. Otherwise, I will remove this person from this group now. Hare Krishna, can you reveal your name, please? Hare Krishna. What name of the person? Yes, Maharaj. What's your name? There is a Nexus Five Maharaj. I don't know who is this one. We have already told them to log in with either uh, <coughs> initiated name or uh, karmic name. Oh. There is a one devotee. I don't know who is this one. Nexus Five. Mm -hmm. If you are not revealing your name, we will remove from the, this group now. Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Nexus 5, the name is shows Nexus 5. Prabhuji, I am going to remove you from the group now. Sorry for that. Yes, you have to do it. Okay, can we begin? Maharaj, we can begin, Maharaj. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavan Hebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasari Gaur Bhaktavinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So we welcome everyone to our Nectar of Instruction. This is the fourth, the fourth class of the Nectar of Instruction for Bhakti Shastri and we're looking today at text number five. May I have the PowerPoint? Yeah. Text, we'll look at text number five and a little bit at text number six also. Uh, oh wait, I have to screen share, right? <laughs> Sorry for that. Put that back. Okay, screen sharing. What's this? Host disabled attended screens. Host disabled. Can you yeah make me the host? Please, yes. Yeah. Maharaj, co-host, Maharaj. Okay, now, got it, yeah, okay. So, can you see the, is, this, is it coming up? Okay. Yes, Maharaj. Can you see everything? Good. Okay, slideshow. So, we've titled this section, Attitudes towards devotees because the previous verse we were hearing about loving exchanges. So we have to know how to relate 
to different devotees. Not all the devotees are on the same level, there's different levels of devotees and according to their different levels we should relate to them in different manners. So we're going to look at something about the, the attitude we should keep towards devotees. Revision. Revision. Right? The relevance of the verse Nitya Siddha Krishna Prim Shadja Kabunai Shravanadi Shuddha Chete Kori Hyudai. Right? Chaitanya Charitamrita. We spoke about the relevance of this verse that love of Krishna is in the hearts of all living entities. So we have to be compassionate on them and and think about giving the holy name to them. That is the compassion of the devotee, to chant the holy name so that every living entity can awaken their Krishna consciousness. Based on this statement from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, that Krishna Prem is in every living entity's heart. Then we spoke about the Dadati principle, giving 50% of one's income to the Lord, right? For those people who have a substantial income, then try to give 50% for the service of Krishna. If you have a lot of gold, you can give half your gold. <laughs> no, don't, don't go bankrupt. <laughs> don't go into debt. Then we spoke about the qualification to utilize everyone's contribution in relation to Pratigrinati principle. Qualification that one should be a very advanced devotee because the temptation is very strong when people get money, the desire for material enjoyment can become very powerful and one can do things which later on he will regret. So we have to be very careful and try to protect the devotees and don't give people too much responsibility, too much independence in uh, receiving. That everything is given for the service of Krishna, must be used for Krishna, not for our sense gratification. And then we spoke about how, how ISKCON is doing in relation to these different loving exchanges. How well are we doing in giving the holy name? How well are we doing in giving prasadam and giving gifts and so on? We want to try to show this pretty lakshanam, these symptoms of love as much as possible taking care of devotees and then taking care, being compassionate to all living entities, trying to help them coming to Krishna consciousness. All right, so we're going to go on now, text number five. I haven't put the verse here. It's not a memorization verse. Uh, you might like to chant it. This, do you have your books there? I don't have it in the slide. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll just leave it. Anyway, text number five it says, A devotee should mentally honor someone who chants the holy name of Krishna. He should offer obeisances to a devotee who has undergone spiritual initiation, diksha, and is engaged in worshipping the deity, and he should as associate with and faithfully serve that devotee who is fixed in undeviating devotional service and is freed from the propensity to criticize others. So that's the translation of text number five. We'll just read someone, would, would you like to, somebody could read here for us from the slide? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Oh. Three levels of Vaishnavas, 
in order to in intelligently ap apply the six fold loving reciprocations mentioned in the previous verse one must select proper person with careful discrimination shri la rupa goswami therefore advises that we should meet with the vaishnavas in an appropriate way according to their particular status in this verse he tells us how to deal with three type of devotees the kanishta adhikari the madhyam adhikari and uttama adhikari nectar of instruction text 5 for part page 48 hari krishna thank you so i think you must have studied this also before in bhagavad gita or in nectar of devotion three types of devotees right kanishta meaning the junior or the neophyte devotee and the madhyam meaning intermediate and uttama means the topmost devotee so these three different levels of devotees are recognized in different different manners we will see today how there's different ways of dis- determining who is a madhyam and who is uttama and who is kanista but it's it's important point that we should know how to relate to different devotees according to their status mm-hmm. someone like to read maraji can read hari krishna maharaj hari krishna the impetus of vaidhi bhakti is scriptural injunction therefore in bhakti rasamrita sindhu the depth of one's faith in and knowledge of the scriptures determines one eligibility to advance and place him in one of three classes of candidates waves of devotion all right so are you familiar with this term vaidhi bhakti Do you know what Vaidhi Bhakti means? Yes, Maharaj. Yes? Can you explain it to me? Vaidhi Bhakti? In Nekar? Yes? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Vaidhi Bhakti is with rules and regulations. Right. Following the rules and regulations, right? There, in, in the Nekar of Devotion, or bhakti rasamrita sindhu rupa goswami has described devotional service is on three levels pure pure devotional service is on three levels there is sadhana bhakti bhava bhakti and prema bhakti sadhana bhakti means devotional service in practice bhava bhakti devotional service in ecstasy and prema bhakti devotional service in love of god now devotional service in practice that uh, sadhana bhakti is divided into two divisions one is called vaidhi bhakti and the other is called raganuga bhakti so we're looking first of all here about vaidhi bhakti vaidhi bhakti means done according to the rules and regulations so in the beginning when we come to krishna consciousness you know we have to learn these different rules and regulations we're often not familiar when we start coming to the devotees programs and we learn oh you don't do this or oh, you don't do that no you can't do this you know so many things right so vaidhi bhakti so uh, mentioned here from the waves of devotion waves of devotion is a, a valuable book written by a disciple of Srila Prabhupada, uh, His Holiness Dhanur Dara Swami, and he's gone through the nectar of devotion and he's listed a number of important points helping to make it easier for us to understand the nectar of devotion. Sometimes the nectar of devotion is a little difficult to understand, but with the help of waves of devotion it becomes easier. so stated here the depth of one's faith and knowledge of the scriptures determine our eligibility to advance and places us in 
one of three classes. First of all, Kanista, right? Kanista, then Madhyam, and then Uttama. So, according to one's faith and knowledge of the scriptures, we're going to see, mentioned here, Kanista has weak faith, easily swayed. Because just a new devotee, we come into Krishna consciousness initially, we're not going to have, you know, we're not going to be very fixed up. We're going to be easily influenced. So our faith is weak and we can be influenced by others and taken away from Krishna consciousness. And our knowledge will also be weak because we're just beginning. Often, I mean, there may be kinistas who've been devotee a long time, <laughs> but, uh, but particularly I'm speaking about new devotees, since someone's just coming into Krishna consciousness, our faith won't be very strong and our knowledge will not be very strong. Mentioned here, cannot offer arguments to opposing opinion. So Kanista, like that. Sometimes people have been devotees a long time and they have weak faith and weak knowledge because they never studied, they never took advantage, they never learned the philosophy. And they were just coming and following, they're thinking, yeah, I'm a Hindu, yeah, I know, yeah. but they didn't know anything. So their faith is weak and they're easily influenced by non-devotees and they don't know anything. That's the Kanista. Then Madhyam, the intermediate level, has strong faith, it's convinced. You know, people may come complain to him, he doesn't worry about it, he's strong, got strong faith. He's got good knowledge also, but his knowledge is not so good that he can defeat. He cannot always defeat opposing opinion. So this is the Madhyama level, intermediate level. And then the Uttama level, strong faith, convinced and can convince others. And knowledge, strong knowledge, can defeat opposing opinion. So you can see the difference here between the three classes of devotees based on faith and knowledge. Here's, would someone like to read? Yes, Prabhu, go ahead. The grades of Translation, Shraddha is confident firm faith that by rendering transcendental loving service to Krishna, one automatically performs all subsidiary activities. Such faith is favorable to the discharge of devotional service. Vaitani Charitamrit, Madhya Leela, 22.6. Yeah, this is quite a well-known verse, quoted also in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna, Krishna Bhakti Kaila Sarva Kama Kritahai. That you just simply have faith that by serving Krishna, you're doing everything. You don't need to do anything else if you're serving Krishna. You don't have to worry about your debts and your obligations and so many other commitments you may have. But simply by serving Krishna, everything is achieved. So that, that is strong faith, when you have that kind of faith, Vishwasa. That. And then another quote here from Bhagavad Gita, yes Prabhu? Yeah, go ahead, at the bottom. Yes. Translation, O Krishna, I totally accept as truth all that you have told me. Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita 10.14. So this is Lord Krishna, this is Arjuna speaking just after Krishna had spoken the Chatur Sloki of the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna was saying, you know, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo, like that, everything comes from me. 
And Arjuna says like this, he said, yeah, I, I accept this truth, all you've told me, I believe it. So that is faith, that kind of faith, that we can accept Krishna. Yeah. Alright, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, a devotee is considered superlative and superior according to his attachment and love. Rati prema tara taratam ye bhakti taratama, bhaktar taratam. Right? That is, this is talking about something different between faith and knowledge. Here they're talking about attachment and love. Someone may have good faith and knowledge, but they may not have this attachment and love. So there, there are differences there. These Bhagavatam slokas describe the vision of the devotee in each classification. Acharya meva haraye pujamya shradaye tate natad bhakte shu chamyeshu sabhakta prakrite smita. So bhakta prakrite, prakrita bhakta, materialistic devotee. Someone, someone read, please. Yes, Bharati, go ahead. A prakartha bhakta or materialistic devotee does not purposefully study the shastra and try to understand the actual standard of pure devotional service. Consequently, he does not show proper respect to advanced devotees. He may, however, follow the regulative principles learned from his guru or from his family who worships the deity. He is to be considered on the material platform, although he is trying to advance in devotional service. Such a person is a Bhakta Praya, Neophyte Devotee, or Bhakta Abhasha, for he is a little enlightened by Vaishnava philosophy. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.47, quoted in Chaitanya Chaitamrita, Madhya Lila 22.74. Hmm. So the Prakrita Bhakta, materialistic devotee, in other words, we're talking about somebody who is Kanista. He's on the bottom, he's, in, he's, he's a, the, on the lower level of devotional service. And his nature is described that he doesn't show respect, he cannot recognize the advanced devotee, but at the same time he follows the principles. He follows the principles and he may even worship the deity, he may do it. It may be that he's born in a family of devotees. So he's, he, may be, he may be trying to advance in devotional service, but he's not very sure how to do it. He may not have, somehow he may not have the, the right association. Right, go ahead, Manaji. Srila Madhvacharya states that a Kanishta Adhikari has no idea that the Supreme Lord has the power to exist outside the temple. Being puffed up by his own ceremonial worship, a Kanishta Adhikari can't imagine that anyone is more religious than he and he is not even aware that other devotees are more advanced. Thus, he can't understand the Madhyama or Uttama standard of Bhakti. And sometimes, because of his false pride, he criticizes more advanced devotees, neglects them or simply has no understanding of their exalted position as preachers or completely self-realized souls. Another symptom of the Kanishta Adhikari is that he is infatuated by the material qualifications of so-called great materialistic persons. Having a bodily concept of life himself, he is attracted by material opulence and thus minimizes Krishna's position. He sees devotional service merely as a religious aspect of life, but thinks life has many enjoyable and worthwhile non-devotional aspects. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.47 So the, the, the characteristics and behavior of these three different levels of devotees is described there in the 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So we can see here how the Kanista 
uh, some of the problems which he has, that uh, generally he thinks God is only in the temple. So he g gives a lot of respect to the deity, but he has no understanding about the position of devotees. He never really understood the importance of being guided by pure devotees. He may have a guru, but it may simply be some family guru or something. He, doesn't, he hasn't really been studying the philosophy. So as said, he's still in the bodily concept of life, and he's attached to material opulence, and like that. But he's religious, he's pious. So going a bit ahead from the Kanista, we come to the expanded vision. Right? We'll ask a Prabhu to read. Yes, some Prabhu can read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare. Yes, Prabhu, go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, three levels of Vaishnava's expanded vision. Ishvara tad abhineshu, balisheshu, tritskara, prema maitri, tupo peksha, yakaroti, samadhya bhangat panamata. An intermediate second class devotee shows love for the Supreme Lord, he is friendly to all devotees and is very merciful to neophytes and ignorant people. The intermediate devotee neglects those who are envious of devotional service. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.46. So, the characteristics of the intermediate devotee, right? He is friendly to all devotees, very merciful to the neophyte and ignorant. And the intermediate devotee neglects those who are envious of devotional service. He just neglects them, just ignore them, because they, they're not interested to hear, and they may be trying to ridicule devotees. So first of all, he shows love, love for the Lord. That's the important point. So you can see four relationships. He shows his love for the Lord, friendly to the devotees, merciful to the neophyte or ignorant people, but who, they're ignorant but they want to hear, and he neglects those who are envious or atheistic or blasphemous. Just avoid them. Don't argue with them. Just leave them. Go away. So four attitudes have to be there for the second class devotee. And now, the most expensive vision, Uttamadikari. Someone read? Prabhu? Some Prabhu? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Sarva Bhute Shoya Prashet Bhagavad Bhavan Atmana Bhutani Bhagavati Atmani Esha Bhagavat Ottamaha. Transition. A person advanced in devo devotional service sees within everything the soul of souls, Krishna. Consequently, he always sees the form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the cause of all causes and understands that all things are situated in him. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.45 Alright, so the vision of the Uttama Adhikari he sees within everything the soul of souls, Krishna. He sees Krishna within everything. He sees that the form of Krishna as the cause of causes, and he understands everything is situated in him. So he sees Krishna everywhere. So the, the qualification for seeing Krishna everywhere is from Brahma Samhita, famous verse. Right? Premanjana charita bhakti vilochanena santa sadaiva ridayeshu vilokayan. The pure devotee sees Krishna in the heart of hearts with the eye of devotion, tinged with the salve of love. 
Brahma Samhita, chapter 5, verse number 38. So, Lord Brahma offers his prayers like that, that the pure devotees see Krishna everywhere, because their eyes are tinged with love, so they can see Krishna, because they have that love, they have the qualification to see Krishna. All right, somebody please read. Prabhu? Some Prabhu? Hare Krishna. Yes. Nanda Palavana. Three levels of Vaishnavas. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Leela, chapter 15 and 16, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in his instructions to the inhabitants of Gulinagama, indicates that the three levels of devotees are determined by how they chant the holy name. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then finally advised one who is chanting the Hare Krishna mantra is understood to be the Vaishnava. Therefore, you should offer all respects to him. Chaitanya Charidamrita Madhya Leela 15.111. All right, thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. So, we, before we heard, devotees were classified according to their faith and knowledge of the scriptures. Now here, Lord Chaitanya was asked by devotees and he gave instruction to these devotees from the village of Kulina and he told them that the level of a devotee is determined by how they chant. Somebody is chanting, just begun to chant, somebody is chanting regularly, and somebody's chanting is very pure and powerful, and he makes others chant. All right, so stated here, anybody who's chanting is understood to be a devotee. You should offer all respect to him. Yeah, Maharaj, you can read now. Hare Krishna Maharaj, a person who is always chanting the holy name of the Lord is to be considered first class Vaishnava and your duty is to serve his lotus feet. Purport, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says that any Vaishnava who is constantly chanting the holy name of the Lord should be considered to have attained the second platform of Vaishnavism. Such a devotee is superior to a neophyte Vaishnava who had just learned to chant the holy name of the Lord. A neophyte devotee simply tries to chant the holy name, whereas the advanced devotee is accustomed to chanting the chanting and takes pleasure in it. Chaitanya Charitramrita Madhya Leela 16.72. Thank you. All right. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati describes when somebody just began to chant, it's a neophyte devotee. Somebody else takes pleasure in chanting. So he's the person who's taking pleasure in chanting. He's, you could say, he's madhyam, or here, here it says in the translation, it said, one who is always chanting is first class Vaishnava. So, difference there. Yes, Manaji can read more. An intermediate devotee is greatly attracted to chanting the holy name, and by chanting, he is elevated to the platform of love. If one chants the holy name of the Lord with great attachment, he can understand his position as an eternal servant of the spiritual master, other Vaishnavas and Krishna himself. Thus, the intermediate Vaishnava considers himself Krishna Dasa, Krishna servant. Chaitanya Charitramrit Madhya Leela 16.72 Parpat. So we're hearing about the Madhyama devotee. He's greatly attracted to chanting chants the name with attachment 
and he understands his position as a servant of the Guru and Krishna and other Vaishnavas. So he always considers himself Krishna Das. So this is an intermediate devotee. All right. Maharaj, can you read this also? Yes, Maharaj. Now the topic of second characteristic, the friendly attitude of the Madhya Vaishnava adopts towards his fellow surrendered devotees of the Lord. Those who are blessed by Shuddha Bhakti, the Kanishta Vaishnava is not on the platform of Shuddha Bhakti. That is to say, he does not serve and satisfy the pure devotees. Therefore, Maitri can only be properly extended by the Madhyama Adhikari to his fellow Madhyama Vaishnavas and their higher level Uttama Vaishnavas. Jaiva Dharma. Mm -hmm. Jaiva Dharma, a book by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. But an interesting point is put here. You see that. Because the Madhyama devotee is supposed to be friendly, right? He offers his worship to the Lord and he'll make friends with the devotees. So he will have a friendly relationship with the devotees. But here it says uh, this Maitri, Maitri this means friendship, that it's only the Madhyama devotee can develop this friendship. Kanista devotee, he, he, he can't do that. Because the Kanista, he, he doesn't have that mood to, to serve and, and to want to please the devotees. He just wants to serve the deity. He doesn't know the importance of the devotees. So that's why he gets some problems. Because he only worships the deity, he doesn't serve the devotees. So his service is not complete. And Krishna is not very happy with people like that. He wants them to also serve the devotees. Actually, it said, more important than serving Krishna is to serve the devotees. So, it's an important point. Right? We don't want to just be running after Krishna, but if we serve the devotees, then you get more mercy, more blessings. Yes? Somebody can read? Hare Krishna. Three levels of Vaishnavas. The intermediate devotee preaches Krishna consciousness to innocent neophyte and stresses the importance of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. An intermediate devotee can identify the non devotee or motivated devotee. The motivated devotee or the non devotee are on the material platform and they are called prakruta. The intermediate devotee does not mix with the such materialistic people. Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Leela 16.72 Parpur. All right. So the duty of the Madhyama devotee neglects people who are not genuine. These motivated devotees, they're not genuine. They've got some other purpose in mind. So their association is not very important, not very valuable. Yes, someone else can read? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Fight and an intermediate devotee should always be eager to hear the Mahabhagavata and serve him in every respect. The neophyte and intermediate devotees can gradually rise to the platform of Uttam Adhikari and become personal devotees. Etani Charitra Amrit, Madhya Lila, 16.74. All right. So, neophyte, meaning Kanista and intermediate, Madhyam, they should be eager to hear from the Uttama, the Mahabhagavat, Uttama Adhikari, should be eager to hear from him. The neophyte, the kanista, and the intermediate, the madhyam, can gradually rise to the platform of Uttama Adhikari and become first-class devotees. 
So that's important for us to remember that whatever position we may be in, it's not eternal. We want to go on, we want to go up, try to go up, become better and better devotee. So Uttama Arikari, they're the first class devotees and, and people come to hear from them. So we also want to hear from them, very important. Yes, someone read? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, a first class Vaishnava is he whose very presence makes others chant the holy name of Krishna. Purpur. With great love and affection, the Mahabhagavata observed the Supreme Personality of Godhead, devotional service and the devotee. He observes nothing beyond Krishna, Krishna consciousness and Krishna's devotees. The Mahabhagavata knows that everyone is engaged in the Lord's service in different ways. He therefore descends to the middle platform to elevate everyone to the Krishna conscious position. Chaitanya Chaitanya Madhya 16.74 So the Uttama is described, his very presence makes everyone chant the holy name of Krishna. Right? If Prabhupada was to walk in to our room, we should all want to chant Hare Krishna. We want to hear from Prabhupada, take advantage of Prabhupada's association. And we want to show Prabhupada that we're chanting Hare Krishna. So Mahabhagavat knows everyone is engaged in the Lord's service in different ways. And so if, when he's on the Mahabhagavat platform, he doesn't need to preach because they're all serving, they're all doing their different services. But when he comes to the Madhyama platform, then he thinks about preaching more. His mood is how to give Krishna consciousness to people. When we get the the the, the the when we get when we get the 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 opportunity to engage in Krishna's service, as then we. When we get the opportunity to serve the great devotee, then we're very fortunate. It's a very rare thing, right? Narada Muni got to serve the devotees during Chaturmasya, and they blessed him. So if, you, if we get the chance to also serve the great devotees, they can also bless us. No more material life. So we have to be eager to hear and to give service to the Mahabhagavats. All right, someone read this. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, according to Srila Jiva Goswami, although a Mahabhagavata sees every living entity as a pure spirit soul, such a, such a Mahabhagavata still experiences special ecstasies and other symptoms upon meeting another Vaishnava. This is a symptom of his love for Krishna. Such a Mahabhagavata feels special ecstatic love upon seeing another living entity directly pleasing the senses of Supreme. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.46 for Hare Krishna. Thank you. So the Mahabhagavat, even though he's the topmost devotee, He's so happy to see other devotees. When he gets association with other devotees, it's very pleasing to him. He doesn't want to be alone. He likes to be in the association of devotees. Because in the association of devotees, talking about Krishna is more pleasure. Just to be on your own, you just want to talk to the wall, it's not very pleasing. So we like to get association with the devotees and get to hear about Krishna, help us to develop a love for Krishna. Yes? Somebody can read more? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes? A Mahabhagavata can turn a living entity from abominable material life to the Lord's service. This is the test of a Mahabhagavata. Although preaching is not meant for a Mahabhagavata, a Mahabhagavata can descend to the platform of Madhama 
Bhagavata just to convert others to Vaishnavi. Actually, a Mahabhagavata is fit to spread Krishna consciousness, but he does not distinguish when Krishna consciousness should be spread from where it should not. He thinks that everyone is competent to accept Krishna consciousness if the chance is provided. Chaitanya Charita Mitra Madhya Leela 16.74 so the test of the Mahabhagavat, <laughs> right? To change people, to make devotees, bring them to Krishna consciousness. This is a sign somebody's a big, a good devotee. Someone's on the topmost level. Wherever he goes, he can be Krishna conscious, and he's able to give Krishna consciousness to others. He thinks everyone is competent to accept Krishna. So he tries to give Krishna consciousness everywhere, to everyone. Please read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Srila Rupa Goswami has written, how to associate properly? Srila Rupa Goswami has written the guidelines of behavior in the text 5 for Madhyama Vaishnava, Giriraja Swami. Go ahead, keep reading. How to associate properly? Rupa Goswami writes, a Madhyama should mentally honor ma Manasandriyata, the devotee who chants the holy name, Krishnati Yasya Giri. Offer humble obeisances, pranash, pranash, pranati bhis to the devotee who had undergone spiritual initiation, diksha, and is engaged in worshipping the deity, bhajan, bhajanatam, isham, and associate with ipshita sangha labhadya and, full, and fully serve shushushaya. That the pure devotee who is advanced in undeviated devotional service, bhajana, vijnam, ananyam, and whose heart is completely devoid of propensity to uh, criticize others, anya, nindani, sunya, rhythm. Yeah, keep it, wait, there's a, just a little more. Oh, oh, okay. So this is Rupa Goswami describing how to, how a Madhyama, we should be Madhyam, preachers, devotee preachers should be Madhyam. So how should we relate to other people? So the verse says like this, Krishnati yasya giritam manasadriyeta, right? Mentally honor the devotee who chants the holy name. And then, um, Krishnati yasya giritam manasadra yeta dikshasti tetpranati bischa bhajantam isham Offer obeisances to the devotee who has undergone spiritual initiation and is worshipping the deity. We offer obeisances to him. And then, uh, like that. Uh, I forget the verse, actually. Anyway, finally... Nindati sunya Sita Sangalabhya. Nindati sunya Sita Sangalabhya. Okay. Associate with... And serve the devotee who is advanced, who is doing the bhajana vijnana ananya, ananyam, undeviating devotional service, ananya bhakti. He's doing this ananya bhakti. He's not. De he's fully absorbed in Krishna, con and he doesn't criticize anybody. He's not going to nonsense talk. He only wants to talk about Krishna. So shunya ridam. So that's in Upanishadamrita. And we want to compare it. Here's now Srimad Bhagavatam. How should we honor devotee? How do we see devotees? Someone read? Hare Krishna Maharaj. 
Yes. Bhagavatam telling us also the same thing, just like Rupa Goswami telling us Upadesha Amrita, different devotees. This is a Madhyama platform. All right, now we're going ahead to text number six. After speaking from text five, we're going ahead to text number six because text number six talks about the, the external features of a devotee, right? Someone please read. Sudhar Pranam Maharaj. Yeah. How to associate properly appropriate attitude towards devotee? Yeah, okay. Prabhu, your mic is a problem. We'll have to let somebody else. Hare Krishna. Appropriate attitude towards devotees. One should overlook a devotee having a body born in a low family, a body with a bad complexion, a deformed body, or a diseased or infirm body. Nectar of Instruction, text 6, page 59. Yes. So, who is a devotee? Who is a devotee? Uh, right. Who is a devotee? What were you saying? Uh, who looks after the events? Who the Bhagavad Gita text is there? No one has that. Pandita Samadarshina, Suni Chena Sapakej, Pandita Samadarshina. One who looks who all with equal vision. Well, you may see everybody equal, it doesn't make you a devotee. You might be a big Mayavadi. Uh, no, when who see, sees Krishna, Krishna, like he sees as Krishna's part and parcel in between the devotee. We have to see properly, you have to see the position of Krishna in relation to the devotees, right? Anyway, who is a devotee? We may say somebody who chants the holy name is a devotee, he's a devotee. But then people also chant the holy name, They're also, they can also be Mayavadis. We know there's Mayavadis also chanting the holy name. Their desire is to become one. Anyway, we're discussing here, there are different qualities, characteristics. The principal characteristic of a devotee, surrendered to Krishna and his name. Surrendered to Krishna and his name. Then, of course, there are many other characteristics. Lord Chaitanya taught Sanatana Goswami. He gave 26 qualities of a devotee. So, I've mentioned here other 25 qualities of a devotee. They're secondary. The principal characteristic is they have to, they must have that mood to surrender to Krishna and know that Krishna's name is not different from Krishna. That's the principal characteristic of a devotee. Yes, please read. Krishna, yes. If one has the principal qualification of surrender to Krishna, but if he does not have all of the secondary qualification to the full extent, he is still considered a devotee. As one continues chanting, the secondary qualification eventually fully manifests. Hare Krishna. Hmm. So it's, it's possible one can have that principal qualification 
that they really surrendered to Krishna. Yeah, but they may, they, may, they may not have all the other qualities. You know, they may be nasty, <laughs> they may argue a lot with devotees, they quarrel and so on. They may not be so peaceful, although they're surrendered to Krishna. But as he continues chanting, the secondary qualities gradually come, gradually they develop. Keep reading, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. A Vaishnava may be criticized on four counts. His caste by birth, previous sins or faults in his life, an unpremediated premediated accidental act of sin, and present traces of previous sinful activity. Though all these conditions may be present in a Vaishnava, they are insubstantial grounds for criticism of a Vaishnava. Okay. So, we, we sometimes find like this, that we, we think of someone, oh, this person, very low-class low person, you know, just like Lord Nityananda made Jagai and Madhai into devotees, <laughs> right? So Jagai and Madhai said, we want, to, we want to be devotees, we will come with you. So you're not, not all of Lord Chaitanya's devotees were very happy about it. They thought, oh no, we don't want these two coming, <laughs> you know, Jagai and Madhai, you know, they did so many sins. Of course, by birth they were Brahmins, but they had a lot of sins, he did a lot of sins before becoming devotees. And of course, then you've got people that his caste by birth, you know, low-born, I'm low-born, I'm from Videshi country, outside the Vedic culture, I'm Malecha, and similarly Africans also considered very low-class, you know. And so by birth, many people are unqualified, but this is not the behavior of a Vaishnava. The Vaishnavas, we shouldn't look at these things. We don't look at the birth and we don't consider the sins are faults in this life and we, even we may do something accidentally, no, unpremeditated, in other words, we didn't think about it, we just did it, some, just some, somehow it happened, you do something, so you can be forgiven for that if you just do it one time. Of course, you can't do it all the time, but it may happen sometime you do something. Present traces of and also, like within our body, that some traces of our past sinful activity can be there. So we shouldn't hold these things against a devotee. That someone's trying to be a devotee, we don't consider all any of these things. It's not proper to criticize a devotee for any of these things. Please continue. Hare Krishna Maharaj, if he criticizes him, bad, bad feelings towards him, or hears him Christ, we are involved in sadhana. Uh, blasphemy a devotee incurs the anger of Krishna. Harinama Chintavi. Mm. So, blaspheming a devotee is Vaishnava Parad, very serious. So, and Krishna will get angry. We don't want to make Krishna angry. So we don't criticize any devotee, anybody trying to be a devotee, we should encourage. You don't have to associate, but we shouldn't criticize. Please read. Prakhananda Dasakur Goswami gives an example of how one mistakes something bad or something good by using the example of someone who is bathing in as urine and thinking that he is cleansing himself. Sometimes we discuss the faults of a Vaishnava and we are thinking that actually this is a very good discussion and very, very purifying to analyze these faults for the sake of clarifying issues to push on the movement. Keep reading. Sometimes it is hard to distinguish the devotional paper from beads. 
Kudinati is a breed of duplicitous behavior on fault finding. Rahalinda Dasa Goswami compares, sorry, Raghunanda Dasa Goswami compares it to be bathing in ag urine. Duplicitous behavior means that we are making a show of devotional service, the main purpose of not pleasing Krishna, but to get some honor or praise so people will respect us or think we are very few. We find fault with others to make our position more by making others others' position less. Mm -hmm. Giri Raj Swami. Mm -hmm. So Giri Raj Swami, a senior disciple, Srila Prabhupada, describing here how Raghunath Das Goswami compares this cr criticism or this kind of speaking about devotees to criticize them. This is like taking bath in the urine of the ass. Did you ever take a bath in the ass urine? I hope not. No, of course not, we wouldn't. Yeah, that would be, yeah. So, but that's what we do when we, if we speak about, if we criticize devotees. So we want to be very careful to control the tongue and not to discuss these, not to discuss the faults of a devotee. All right? Someone like to read this, please? Amadaji can read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. One is forbidden to observe the activities of a pure Vaishnava from a material point of view. For the neophyte especially, considering a pure devotee from a material point of view is very injurious. One should therefore avoid observing a pure devotee externally but should try to see the internal features and understand how he is engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. In this way, one can avoid seeing the pure devotee from a material point of view and thus one can actually become a purified devotee himself. Extra Instruction, text 6, page 64. Right. So, the Rupa, Rupa Goswami in his verse, he's described that we may see the, the devotee that his body is diseased, he may be invalid, or he may be of low, low birth, and he may have some uh, external characteristics which make him look very unpleasant, not very good looking, and like that, so we may deride him on the basis of the external features. But this is, a, this is very wrong, right? What is the example Rupa Goswami gives in text number 6? Rupa Goswami gives the example about Mother Ganga. What does he say? Yes, go ahead, speak. During the rainy season, there is a full of bubbles, foam and muds, Maharaj. The Ganga water does not become polluted by this one. So advanced spiritual understanding means uh, the path in the Ganga which is considered to be a purest one. Yeah, we should bathe in Mother Ganga without considering the bubbles and the foam and the mud. Those who are in knowledge will bathe in the Ganga without considering the bubbles and the foam and the mud. Right? And so in the same way, those who are in knowledge, they'll be willing to hear and to have the association with a person despite his external features. Externally he may appear to be very unpleasant or un not pleasing, not socially acceptable, but if internally he's, if, he's, uh, if he's fixed in devotional service, we should be very happy to hear from him. There's an example, I think it was Angira Muni, he went to an association and Angira Muni's body was very twisted, or maybe it's Astavakra Muni. Anyway, a great sage, his body was all twisted and deformed and he came to this meeting, there was to be a meeting of saintly persons. And when he appeared there, some of the people 
some of the people who were at the meeting, they began to laugh at him. They thought, look at this person, look, his body is so ugly and so unpleasant. They were laughing at him. And he said to them, he said, oh, maybe I've come to the wrong place. I thought I was coming to a spiritual gathering. He saw they were on the bodily platform. So in Krishna consciousness, we are on the spiritual platform. We are meant to be transcendental. So we don't deride a person based on their material uh, features. We have to see beyond that. We have to see their internal features and see how they are serving Krishna. Okay. So question. Why is an appropriate attitude towards devotees, external features, important within ISKCON? Yes, who would like to answer? One, we'll have from, maybe from a marriage first of all. Yes, a marriage can answer. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, Iskon believes that Iskon philosophy is that we are not a body, we are a soul, and if we are distinguishing in devotees from external feature, then it's wrong. Okay. Yes, it's wrong. Why is this particularly important within Iskon? Because Iskon name is International Society of for Krishna Consciousness. So Krishna is for everyone, not for particularly Hindu or Indians or like that. Yes, very good. Yes, correct. Iskon is for everyone, right? The whole world. Yeah. For men and women, young people and old people, right? We don't say, oh, you're too young or you're too old, we don't want you here. You know, no, everyone is welcome in Krishna consciousness. We don't say, oh, you women, no, we don't want you women here, we just want men here. <laughs> no, we need everyone in Krishna consciousness. Krishna is in everyone's heart. So give everyone a chance. Would any of the men like to comment on this? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. The question is, why, why is an appropriate attitude towards devotees? The external features are important. So what is this question? The external features we are giving importance in his call. Uh, because we are in the is a movement. We are we are spreading it the movement to the masses. We are spreading Krishna consciousness to the masses. So those who are preaching the Krishna consciousness should be externally also be a convincing person and an inspiring person. Okay. I, that's what I understand the question under. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. One time. You know, one time uh, there was a situation in, it happened in the New, New York temple. So in New York there were some black-bodied devotees, you know, some Negro devotees. And so one of the Negro devotees, he went to Prabhupada and he complained to Prabhupada. And he said, Prabhupada, he said, some of the devotees here, they discriminate against me because I'm black. Because I'm in this black body, they discriminate against me. They don't treat me like the other devotees. And so Prabhupada said to him, he said, he said, if, if, they, if they don't treat you like other people, they're wrong. But he said, if you take, if you're offended by them, then you're also wrong. <laughs> he said, you shouldn't be offended by them. <laughs> he said, because they're in ignorance. So you should be convinced that what you're doing is right. Don't, you, you don't need to feel offended because they're wrong. But if you take offense and you th if you're thinking you're black and they're white, then you're wrong. <laughs> you're also in the bodily concept because you're thinking you're different. But you should know you're not different. You should know you're, Krish you're Krishna's servant just like they are. So, so we shouldn't be offended, you know. 
So sometimes like that, somebody treats us wrong, we may know they're wrong, we shouldn't get upset. We have to tolerate. Okay? And so Prabhupada expected us like that, to be tolerant. Someone's wrong. We shouldn't be offended. We just understand it's their ignorance. So we're going to speak about something else now, dealing with an empowered Vaishnava, how to properly relate with an empowered Vaishnava. What do you think? How should we relate to an empowered Vaishnava? Right? When your Guru Maharaj comes here, how do you deal with them? How do you relate? Yes, go ahead, Prabhu. Uh, empower with, empowered Vaishnava, we should deal with uh, all respect and uh, uh, we should treat them uh, well. We should serve them well. And we should always uh, take their association in a better, better mood to uplift ourselves, our uh, spiritual upgradation. Right. Yes. The empowered Vaishnava, he, he doesn't, you know, you, you know, there are some gurus, they come, they just want to take the money from their disciples. But the really empowered guru, he doesn't come just to get the money, he comes to take away the pain from the devotees, to take away their pain, to take away their ignorance. That's where he's really come to get rid of. Some other, most, you get these other gurus, they come there and just want the money. But the, the really empowered Vaishnava he will take away the pain, the suffering which we're experiencing. Someone read? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Dealing with an empowered Vaishnava. An empowered person who is actually engaged in the confidential service of the Lord should not be treated as an ordinary human being. Oh, there's a bit more. Wait. Yes? should not be jealous of an empowered Vaishnava or try to bring him down to his platform. It is an offensive to consider an empowered Vaishnava an object of disciplinary action. It is offensive to try to give him advice or to correct him. All right. So somebody who is on the topmost platform of devotional service so other people, they, just like our own spiritual master, founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, sometimes uh, the God brothers, they didn't like it. One of the things they didn't like, you know, was that Prabhupada took the same name as his spiritual master. But Prabhupada points out, he said that name was used by many people. He said it wasn't just meant for one person. It's a, you know, it's the name of a. He said, you know, to call somebody simply Swamiji is not very nice. And so Prabhup and then so then they, they asked Prabhupada, then what name would you like? And so then Prabhupada, he mentioned, you know, these different names like Vishnupad and so on. And then he said he liked the name Prabhupada of all the names. And so then the devotees said, then we want to give you this name, Prabhupada. But some of the God brothers, his God, Prabhupada's God brothers, they didn't like it. So they came to complaining about it. So Prabhupada told to them, he said, well, I don't call myself that. He said, my disciples call me that, but I don't call myself that. And then Prabhupada took out his letterhead and, his, and he showed them. And his letterhead simply said, Tridandi Swami A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. He didn't put the name Prabhupada. He said, only my disciples call me that. 
<laughs> so he showed them. You know, they, they shouldn't be jealous, you know, because Prabhupada has so much success. And so they, they shouldn't be jealous, rather they should try to appreciate. And they shouldn't try to give advice or to correct him. So these are some problems which sometimes come up. We have to understand the exalted position of an empowered devotee, how they're simply trying to spread Krishna consciousness. Okay. Oh, all right. From Srimad Bhagavatam. Someone can read, please. Hare Krishna. Foundation for further advancement. A Prakrta Bhakta or materialistic devotee does not purposely study the Shastra and try to understand the actual standard of pure devotional service. Consequently, he does not show proper respect to advanced devotees. He may, however, follow the regulatory principles learned from his spiritual master or from his family who worship the deity. He is to be considered on the material platform, although he is trying to advance in the devotional service. Such a person is Bhakta Praya, neophyte duty, or Bhakta Basha, for he is a little enlightened by Vaishnava philosophy. Srimad Bhagavatam 12.2.47 Chaitanya Charita Amrita Madhya Leela 22.74 Thank you Prabhu. Yes. So we're quoting this verse, this section again from Srimad Bhagavatam about the Kanista because it, you know this tendency is there that when we're dealing with the, the empowered devotees that we try to minimize their activities. He doesn't show proper respect to advanced devotees. So that's, you see, it shows the Kanista nature that they're, they criticize someone. So we want to be careful like that. We don't want to hear from these people. We want them to understand. Hmm. All right, someone else read, please. Yes. After hundreds of lifetimes of faithfully worshipping the deity of Lord Vasudeva with the external paraphernalia, one realizes the true nature of his transcendental name and mantras, and the bondage of one's materialistic men mentality slackens. As a Kanishta Adhikari gradually comes to the pursue the mental activities of a devotee and tries to seriously to advance to a higher state, his materialistic conceptions will go away of their own accord. He then exhibits loving service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and makes friendship with the devotees who are the clear most sons of... Oh, sorry, yeah. ...sons of the Lord. And by appreciating the universal quality of devotional service to Krishna, he becomes very much eager to engage other innocent people in the service of the Lord. Further, as he begins to make significant advancement, he becomes Im inimical to anything or anyone that hinders the progress of his devotional life, and thus he avoids atheistic people who cannot benefit by good instruction. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada Prabhupada says, Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.47 forward. Mm. So, again, this describing, you know, the nature of the devotee, trying to preach Krishna consciousness, it, the Kanista gradually comes to understand the mental activities of a devotee. So he tries to advance. He's Kanista in the beginning, we have to begin from the Kanista platform, and, but we, then we want to advance, we want to we find out more. 
We want to advance to a higher stage. We give up the material conception, thinking we're the body, and we start to appreciate more the devotees. Of course, making friends with the devotees is very important. In the beginning you only think, think of the deity, but I think the, the, the Kanista wants to become more of a devotee, so he starts to make friends with the devotees and then he starts also to engage other people. He thinks about giving other people the chance to do service for Krishna, how to engage people. So he may be the pujari, so he's happy. He doesn't take all the maha for himself. He will like to distribute the maha, <laughs> right? He likes to give other people the chance to get the mercy of Krishna. So it begins to make advancement. So then he also avoids the people who are atheistic, who are blasphemous, who are offensive. Just, just neglect them, keep away from them, don't argue with them. You can't do any good for them by arguing with them. So just leave them, stay away from them. So that's how to make advancement. Someone please read. Krishna Maharaj, foundation for further advancement. One should not remain a Kanista Adhikari, one who is situated on the lowest platform of devotional service and is interested only in worshipping the deity in the temple. One therefore has to raise himself from the position of Kanista Adhikari to the platform of Madhyama Adhikari. In this verse, Sri Rupa Goswami advises the devotee to be intelligent enough to distinguish between the Kanista Adhikari, Madhyama Adhikari and Uttama Adhikari. The devotee should also know his own position and should not try to imitate, the de imitate a devotee situated on a higher platform. Nectar of Instruction, text uh, 5, per, per, uh, page number 58. Right. So we're coming back to text 5 again, you know, we went on to text 6 for a little while and we were talking about not looking at the external features, but then coming back again to talk about the different levels of devotees, so that making the distinction between the Madhyama, the Kanista and the Uttama, we should know our own position, don't try to imitate a devotee on a higher platform. Hmm. We have to be... Some dis yeah. Someone to manage can read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. There are various ingredients of a neophyte and of an intermediate devotee. A neophyte devotee may have some ingredients of an intermediate devotee, like faith, but may not have the other ingredients like knowing how to deal with the other devotees, innocent people and envious people. <laughs> right? Yeah, so in some ways, so in some aspects, we may be Kanista, in some aspects we may be Madhyam, or we may even be Uttama. We can be a mixture of different qualities. So it's not so easy to classify people like this. You can't, you know, we don't want to put people down and say, oh, this, he's a Kanista, or, like that. <laughs> In the same way, somebody shouldn't claim, I'm Uttama, you know, you don't want to do that either. Mm. We may have some qualification, we may have some good qualities, we may have some weak points also. Weak points. Here, Giri Rajswami mentions about a weak point, maybe dealing with the devotees, innocent people and envious people. Mm. So. We may not be so expert in that, that we can keep always friendly relationships with the devotees. That may be a problem also, sometimes just getting, some people have difficulty. They may be very knowledgeable of scriptures, they have a lot of faith in Krishna consciousness, but somehow they just can't get along with devotees. <laughs> so that's a problem. So some 
problems are there, you see. We see like the Goswamis of Vrindavan, in the Goswami Astikam it's mentioned about the Goswamis of Vrindavan, Dira Dira Jana Priyo Priyakaro. They said that the Goswamis, they were loved by the gentle and the ruffians. They were so elevated in Krishna consciousness that everybody loved them, the gentle and the ruffians. And so that's the sign of the really advanced devotee like that. We want to also try to cultivate that kind of mood. Yes? Someone can please read this verse? Those who are free from anger and all material desires, who are self-realized, self-disciplined and constantly endeavoring for perfection, are assured of liberation in the Supreme in the very near future. Bhagavad Gita 5.26 so we've highlighted this section, constantly endeavouring for perfection, you see? So, it's, it's an important point that we, we, we can't, we're trying, we're not, we don't think we're perfect, but we, we keep trying to become perfect. So practice, right? We have to keep trying, keep endeavouring, important for us. Okay. <laughs> we have, there, there are questions about self-assessment, you know, it, it's a bit complicated. The questions, I'll send them to you later on and you can look through the questions. But the assessment stuff part is quite complicated, I haven't really got into the whole thing yet. Okay, so let's look at what we covered today. We explained about three categories of devotees. Right? Three categories of devotees. Who can remember? What were the, what's, the cat, cat, what's the nature of the Kanista devotee? Someone can describe? Kanista, cat, Kanista characteristics? Sorry? Weak in faith and weak in knowledge of the scriptures. Right. So, what happens when he's weak in faith? What's going to be the problem? Uh, he's, uh, he may leave that faith sometimes. Yeah, I mean, he's always wavering. Yes, he won't be very steady. Can be influenced by other people. Yes. And then the Madhyama devotee, what is his characteristics? He is strong in faith, uh, strong in knowledge also, but he cannot uh, explain to others. I mean, he cannot argue. They are not able to convince others, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. And then the Uttama? Uh, strong in faith, strong in knowledge, and can convince others. Okay, yes. Yeah, he's able to convince others. So then, how do we deal? How will we deal with the Kanista devotee? How should we relate to him? If we are a Madhyama devotee, how should we relate to a Kanista devotee? Hmm? How will we deal with someone? Yes, how do you deal with someone who chants the holy name of Krishna, Kanista devotee? So, Maharaj, we can uh, always, the, the Madhya Madhikari can always guide him. He can be uh, uh, helping to develop his uh, faith in Krishna. Yes. Rupa Goswami says, respect him in the mind, right? 
respect him in the mind. Krishneti yasya giri tam manasadriyeta. We, we respect him in the mind. And as you say, you may like to help him, show compassion on him, help him to come to the higher level, but certainly want to respect him. Because he's chanting the holy name. He may not be chanting much, but he's chanting. So it's beginning. So within the mind we will respect him. All right? And then the Madhyama devotee, what is his vision? Prabhu, some Prabhu can answer. The Madhyama devotee will have the vision. Four characteristics of a Madhyama Adhikari. Yes? As described in Srimad Bhagavatam, four characteristics of a Madhyama Adhikari. Nobody know? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Maharaji. Madhya Madhikari uh, is a devotee who worships Krishna as the object, uh, center of the object, and he makes friendship with all the devotees, other devotees. And he is very merciful and ignorant, uh, well, he is merciful to all the ignorant devotees in your minds, Kanishtha. Yes, one more. So that's three, there are four, four characteristics, right? He offers his worship to Krishna. Yes, yes. worships, yes. Worship. And, and then? Who are envied to the Lord, and they can, he can leave that place. Now, moment who are envied, yeah. Yeah, it, right. So he offers his worship to the Lord and his love to the Lord, and he will make friends with the devotees, have friendly relationships with devotees. Then what else? Mercy. Mercy to who? Mercy to the Kanishtha Or merciful to people who are as you, ignorant. ignorant, right. People who are ignorant or people who are inquisitive, who want to hear, right? He will be willing to help them and guide them. They're willing to hear. And then he will neglect who? And the envious people. Such as? Such as Mayavadis. Atheists. Atheists. Uh, uh, blasphemers. Aparadis. <laughs> These kind of people, right? Yes. My body also, yeah. People who are not interested in Krishna consciousness. If they're not interested in Krishna consciousness, okay, we just leave them. We don't need to disturb them because they'll just get angry and they'll become more offensive. So that's not good, right? If we go and trouble them and they become more angry, then they become more offensive. And so it's not good. So if we know that they're not interested, okay, just go, uh, leave them. Don't push them. No, no, just, you may think, oh, no, no, I look at this, it's really important, I have to... <laughs> so, but if you know they're going to get really angry and upset, better just to leave them. All right? Yes. Ways, describe ways of associating appropriately with the three categories of devotees. Who knows? How do we associate with the with the kanista? Uh, honoring that respect in the mind to them. Yes, and then the madhyam. Madhyam, we should make friendship uh, to the madhyam, other madhyam friends. No. What does Rupa Goswami say? One should offer humble obeisances. To who? Who has uh, who's already initiated 
Yes, we, sh we offer humble obeisances to one who has undergone spiritual initiation, diksha, meaning the second initiation, and is engaged in worshipping the deity. We offer them humble obeisances, right? And we'll ask a Prabhu, we'll ask some Prabhu to tell us how about associating with the Uttama Adhikari. Krishna Maharaj, yes, respecting, uh, the, respecting the senior uh, uh, topmost uh, Adhikari and uh, understanding or learning from them. Okay. What does Rupa Goswami say? You should serve them. All right. I know you know it. Let's the other Prabhus have a chance. Okay. We should associate with and faithfully serve, right? We have to give service, give association and hearing from them and serving them, right? That's how you associate with the Uttama Adhikari. Then we talked about the importance within ISKCON of maintaining an appropriate attitude towards devotees' external features. Right? External features. Oh, we don't want these women coming. We want men. Oh, we don't want this, you know, so, so many things. Oh, this person's terrible. I know this person. He's a rascal. Oh, a very low-class person. No, we give everyone a chance become reformed. Lord Chaitanya is Patita Pavan, right? He's the deliverer of the fallen souls. So the fallen souls come, they're coming to Krishna consciousness. We, we give everyone the opportunity to become a devotee. Of course, they have to change. We have to change when we become a devotee. We cannot remain fallen. The devotee was saying to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, I'm so fallen. Prabhupada said, don't remain fallen. You have to become, <laughs> you have to change. So we come to Krishna consciousness. External features, not a, it shouldn't be, an, it's not a, a barrier to us becoming a devotee. There was one devotee one time in Germany. Prabhupada initiated this one devotee. Uh, he, he he had been working in a in a in a slaughterhouse. He'd been working in a slot in a slaughterhouse, killing animals, and he became a devotee. And Prabhupada initiated him and gave him a beautiful name. He gave him the name Maharati. Maharati, great fighter. You know, he'd been working in the slaughterhouse, killing animals, but he became a devotee and Prabhupada accepted him and gave him a nice name, initiated him. So we don't discriminate again on peop against people. Then we, we also spoke about the appropriate way of seeing and relating to empowered Vaishnavas. Can somebody explain more? What's the appropriate way of seeing the empowered Vaishnava? How should we see them? As good as Guru, and uh, uh, we have to respect him as a representative of the God. We should not find fault in him. We should not argue with him. We should not correct him. Oh, very good Prabhu. Yes, very nice. Thank you. Okay. One more. Oh, this is the personal. Okay, self assessment. All right. Clu concluding quote here from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. Someone please read. Concluding quote The Kanishka Adhikari devotees take full shelter of the ch chanting of Sri Krishna Nama knowing it to be the supremely 
beneficial. But they don't realize that the position of Madhyama Adhikari is above their present position and that they should strive to reach the position at some time in the future. Sri La Bhakti Vedanta Saraswati Swami Thakura in his commentary Anavirti. Hmm. So somebody may be Kanista, they take they're chanting the holy name a lot and they're worshipping the deity, but they should also try to come up to the Madhyama platform. They should shouldn't be happy just to be on the Kanista platform. So sometime in the future, may take some time, we're Kanistas. But by association, by practice, keeping up Krishna consciousness, we can gradually come to the Madhyama platform. Actually, Krishna consciousness movement is really meant for bringing people to the Madhyama platform. Some devotees, immediately they join Krishna consciousness, or even before they join Krishna consciousness, they're out selling books. <laughs> they're out distributing books, distributing books to people. One devotee I know, he, he's in England now, he's a spiritual master, and he told me the day he joined, the next day, one, he'd been in dev devotee one night, next day he went traveling Sankirtan with the devotees to distribute books. <laughs> so that's, that's Mandyama, that's preaching. So our movement is really meant for that, bringing people to the Madhyama platform. That's, that's where we can preach, distribute Krishna consciousness. Okay, are there any questions from anybody? I'll send you the overview for this slide, this, these slides, I'll send you the overview on this. All right, if there's no questions, then we'll just finish here today, a little early.